Today, we're talking about Sparking Zero at the Game Awards, but like actually at the Game Awards, and Dragon Ball Diamond might have some pacing issues still. We're back. We're in a podcast. Yeah, we, we're back. We're back, dude. So much to talk about. I, we're going to spitball right here, right now with you, Dotto. Do you Wait, think... What? Are you ready? Go ahead. Are you ready for yeah. this? Do you think Beast is revealed at the Game Awards? Oh, like for Sparking Zero? Yes. Uh, no. That you was easy. Uh, no, there's no, there's actually no what, way. Why, why would, why would they? Okay, so Sparking when Zeros. When does the DLC come out? It comes out in January. Mm, it went, oh yeah, the, and the trailer, the Game Awards are December 20th, right? Or, or December 12th? 10th or something like that. Uh, listen, that adds a little credence, but no. Dragon Ball wouldn't do that, bro. Next question. Dude, what? No, you're dude, you're so full. <laughs> that's where that's you're, where we literally got the title yourself, of the you're game lying last to yourself year. Again, you're lying to yourself again, bro. That is like the you're, big reveal last year was literally at the Game Awards. Again, you're you're making things up, bro. You're crazy. I mean, th that might be a fact, but listen, uh, I just don't see it going down that way. If I can be completely and totally honest with you, speak. I, I think it's gonna be a private trailer. <laughs> okay, bud, dude. Okay, but. Here's the thing too. Speaking of this, we can talk about this as well. Have you seen the Steam's the Steam's like season pass update? I did actually. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know if what if you read more into it. I think the internet, at least in my circle of games, I think the internet is way blowing this out of proportion. I don't. Well, first off, like I don't be playing really Ubisoft games, so maybe that maybe they're like a culprit of this or something like that. But like, yeah, I don't. I won't lie to you. Am, am, am I weird? You can tell me if I'm weird for this. And, and so so can you guys. What's up? Welcome to Key Moments. Hit that like button. Subscribe. We're trying to get to 100,000 subs. But Smooth. I don't mind the mystery in a season pass. Like, I don't, like, we know Beast is in this superhero pack, even though they're only showing us the gammas. But I kind of like the mystery right now. Like, I, I would hate if Steam made us see all the characters. Like, I kind of, like, I love the looming mystery of what it is. And then on top of that, Dotto, with the Dima stuff, they obviously not they're doing two dlc packs for that they literally probably can't even show those characters because like they just can't show them so then is there just no is there no season pass on like steam for dragon ball games moving forward like the See, fighters reveals is... can't happen if if they show you all the care <laughs> have to show you all the characters the entire season pass you're buying this is why i blame the internet for for scaring people I, well and and for trying to make this the narrative because what you're saying is the narrative people made but in the Steam update, they literally said that, like, just saying that four characters are coming is enough. So you're oh. still going to be allowed to do silhouettes. Oh. That's, that's, what, that's what I meant when I was like, I don't know why the internet is making this a big deal. Like, okay. and again, I'm not saying that people are intentionally spreading false information. But, like, I found out about it through Maximilian Dude's post where he's like, rest in peace, fighting game silhouettes. But by Steam's rules, you would still totally be allowed to do silhouettes. You would just have to say seven which i think again companies that i play games from have done this for a long time they'll say actually you know what i can't remember if fighters did this but you wouldn't technically be allowed to well maybe they would make an exception if you're delivering more than you promised but say five are coming and then be like ah a sixth one is on the way or something like that but yes you're allowed to still have hidden surprises okay so to me it was a mind. nothing update this is nothing yeah, it was yeah, it was it was like absolutely nothing. The only thing it stops is like outright scams, which again, I don't know. You mentioned Ubisoft. Maybe they do that where they're like yeah. season pass like season pass for something. Just buy it. I'm not trying yeah, I'm not trying to like necessarily throw them because I really it, it'd be a lie if I said I don't still play some Ubisoft games because I'm I am i am like it I'm a, I'm trying still try to be an Assassin's Creed head. What you know what I mean? Like I try to be, but like none of those have captured my attention and years at this point matter of fact you know what really to capture my attention is that apparently ac syndicate update that is mm -hmm. a randomly dropping a 60 fps like uh patch for series x and ps5 i'm like wait what i can play that on 60 fps on my console that's kind of cool but like so i'm not just trying to necessarily throw them on the bus but i i feel like that was that's one of the people i think of with maybe like a egregious season pass where you don't necessarily know what you're getting um, out of the gates but maybe i'm wrong i could be totally wrong with that if you, any of you guys are ubisoft heads let me know 
Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Look, I, I love being controversial on podcasts, but I'll just go ahead and say maybe the reason it doesn't affect me is because <laughs> I don't think I've ever once in my life bought a season pass for something that is a single player game. And I feel like that's mostly the area where not people Kakarot. get scammed. I no, I not even Kakarot. Okay. <laughs> Although to be fair, I think Bandai handles DLC pretty well. So I think if somebody bought the season pass for Kakarot, I don't think anybody feels like they got scammed. Not do you I'm, think so? No, I'm no. I well, okay, no, 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 no. I I definitely have seen where people would definitely feel that way for things like because Kakarot's first two DLC packs for ROF and especially for Battle of Gods, like both of those were just like some quick in and out fights. Like it was barely an hour of content. And then and then we got to like the future DLC pack where it actually felt like it really expanded the game. So I the the first those first two packs were were definitely a bit controversial, I feel like, in the Dragon Ball Z Kakarot community, for sure. Because they felt just a little those did feel a little lackluster, but I mean, they they basically delivered what they did, and they they ended up setting up a format that we now understand. Like they kind of sort of showed you, like if you were getting like a a a good fat DLC or like here's a couple of boss fight DLCs. They actually sort of made that distinction later on. But yeah, I just like for me, I miss out on that whole like area of gaming because like what's another one like a. What what's that shitty? Well, not, not shitty, but like mid star. That's Starlink. What the fuck? Star, star, no, bro, ah, Starfield. The, it's yeah, Starfield. Like Starfield had like a season pass, didn't it, or like a DLC on the line? And it, people it just, got upset well, it just about dropped that. an expansion. It just dropped an expansion like a couple months ago, and apparently yeah. it was still broken. It was very bland. Decisions didn't have like too much of like an impact, etc. I think that. I think that, but that this is we're getting totally off topic with game 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 of the year, the game awards, and all that stuff. <laughs> but uh, I I think Bethesda just needs like a they have like their core fan base that enjoys that certain like game loop. But I think it's time to maybe do like a real overhaul because some people get mad when you say this about Starfield, but it really did just feel like Skyrim in space. Like most of the same game mechanics you could play from 2011 in Skyrim are the exact same game mechanics you're experiencing except with guns in Starfield. And and even just saying with guns is a bit of an overshoot. Like I, I genuinely, I don't hate that game as much as other people. I think it's just the definition of mid and it controls like ass. Um, That's the shooting a, also controls like ass. Yeah. The shooting was not satisfied. I think that was what made me lose interest in that game was the shooting to me was not satisfying. Like, yeah. And uh special place in hell for all games that start off. Like, I genuinely thought I was going to drop Starfield the second it started telling me how much I could customize my ship and how it was all going to be super important and everything. I, I was like, games that introduce incredibly complex mechanics right at the beginning and make me think that I'm going to have to interact with them at all, I hate that shit. And Starfield was horrible with that. I, I won't lie. I, did, I don't really care about that kind of stuff, so I just kind of like neglected that and just kept playing through the story missions. That's what I'm saying. I, I neglected, I ended up neglecting it too, but the simple fact that they made me think I, oh, I thought it was going to be mandatory. So I was like reading it and I was like, this, I'm not going to play it. Like, this is so stupid. Yeah. I don't, I don't and care then it about ended that. up being, com yeah, it ended up being completely like not even a thing. So I got to move on with my life, thankfully, but yeah, that, that game was uh, pretty mid. And I think, I, I think Bethesda is pretty trash right now. I do think they need to change up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, whenever Skyrim 6 happens and when they inevitably be on PS5 as well and you can play it on Game Pass and all that stuff I I hope that it's hope that it feels like a substantial upgrade because I I've talked about this to you a few times but I'm I'm in the middle of this incredibly long-standing Witcher playthrough and I've actually put like probably about 100 hours into the Witcher 3 and about 50 of them have been this year and uh, and the other 50 have been in the course of the last like nine years and playing that game I'm like which that game's only four years newer than Skyrim, but there's so many things about that game that feels like an actual evolution in that sort of space that Skyrim still hits an itch that very few games do for me personally, but still, like, you can tell, like, this evolution, whereas now you're looking at Starfield, which is a, what, 2023 game, so 12-year newer game from Skyrim, and so much of it still just feels so Bethesda. I don't know. And, like, at what point are we finally just, like, 
this feels like a Bethesda game, but you, you finally are just like, yeah, it feels like a Bethesda game, so I don't want to fucking play it anymore because it's 2028, dude. <laughs> like, it's still, it feels like dog shit, man. Like, come on. I mean, I, I even just think as a guy that's not super into Bethesda games, I think it would be fine if you want to make it feel like that, but just like clean everything up around it. I just don't think they should still be moving like Skyrim. Like, the movement and the shooting and all that, <laughs> yeah. it's like, dude, this is like complete ass. Yeah. Complete ass. Uh, but but why did this turn into also a, why this turn Bethesda hate here? Uh, by the way, I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I have a culprit. I, I do own quite a few copies of Skyrim. So I, you know, like, um, in, in Todd Howard, we kind of trust, maybe, not really. I, I, bu I bought, I think, two copies. And I've I never think I bought the three, game. technically. I traded one in, though. Wow. So. Yeah, see, I, I just bought the second one because I was like, maybe this time I'll play it. Now I, I didn't end up playing it. So. I've never beat it. Whatever. But I probably have like 100 hours what? in that game. I've never. I know a lot of people that have never actually like finished the main storyline. Like I've done so many of these side, like so many. That is the beauty of most of their things. And and I even in the, some of the Starfield stuff I've played, the side quests are usually very interesting. And so like I've never actually finished the main the main storyline of Skyrim. Also, I went down the rabbit hole of like I have a powerful graphics card now. Let me see how many mods I can throw on my PC Skyrim. But anyways, yeah, mods did look pretty cool. Back to the game awards, where mm. first off we can start with the with the fighting game category. Dotto again, I'm I'm Dotto's hedging his bets that Beast <sighs> won't be there. I actually do think this is where they'll show off the DLC because we'll be about I think five to six weeks out from the DLC actually launching because it, it is a confirmed January launch for the part one DLC, which is the superhero DLC um who do you so who do you all think will be there i think it's a, i think it's a pretty obvious it's gamma one gamma two do you think it'll be uh use the ultimate go on we currently have or do you think it'll be a new ultimate go on probably new probably new and then it would just take be up another superhero slot. gohan and then super yes they'll i mean they may even make him take up four slots we don't we don't really know uh but i think it'll just be it's just four right so i think it'll be gammas beast and then well, I guess actually this is Sparking Zero. Cell Max could technically be there. I hmm. I have to imagine Cell Max is there, yes. Yeah, that, that would actually be kind of cool. I mean, it sucks because I'm never going to want to see him or I'm never going to want to play as him and certainly not play against him. So kind of a, a nothing pick there, but could be kind of fun. Um, but yeah, I think it'll just be the, the main ones you'd expect. So those five, I guess. Um, I don't think they'd be any surprises other than that. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, yeah, I think, I, well, we know Game of One and Two because they're literally on it. So yeah, OP, yeah, so Gohan, and Cell Max. Yeah, I, <laughs> I told uh, our buddy Iron Kane that <laughs> he joked, and he probably should have used this title, but te technically, he his his game, The Breakers, has like a playable Cell Max in it, which is like kind of sort of the first like real one if you don't include Dokkan, which you probably wouldn't because this is like I different. Wouldn't. Uh, so so breakers has like the first real playable cell max i'm like you better use that title because that's probably only going to be a thing for roughly like a month and a half you know what i mean like cell yeah, max will it, likely be in the the dlc pack for sparking zero if he didn't already do the they added cell max title i mean that that's already a, a flummoxed move right there because uh, because that's that's over um pretty soon then again breakers might be over pretty soon so i mean all things come to an end um, what did you think about the category itself here? Because I, I know I'm gonna piss people off, but what are, what are you picking in best fighting? If if this were, if these were the Nano Awards, what's uh, winning it? So I, I think most people think I would say Sparking Zero, and I do actually like Sparking Zero. And while I haven't played a ton of Tekken Eight, I feel like Tekken Eight deserves its flowers here. So I probably would choose Tekken Eight personally. Wow, I would I would watch the Nano Awards because yes, I I think a lot of people always get on me about this, but Sparking Zero is not a fighting game. Uh, it's not i mean you could it's an arena fighting game uh and really the only two choices i think can even make sense here are grand blue fantasy versus rising and yeah, tekken 8 i was thinking the same uh, thing but grand blue fantasy versus rising is like a i haven't played it actually so i can't really talk too much but it's like you know the fantasy versus i did play and while it was fun it's kind of old fashioned now i don't think many players are still playing it it's probably still a, a good number uh, i'm not trying to Beat it down. So really, I think you're completely... Tekken 8 is literally the only option here for me. It's literally the only one I see. Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection Arcade Classics. If that won... That would be kind of sad. That would be the most... That would be... <laughs> you're kind of based. That would be just depressing. 
imagine Marvel vs. Capcom 2 winning an award in 2024, dog. It's time. Like, it's cool that it's back out, but why are we giving this an award? What? This yeah. is like the money's their reward. They don't need an award. <laughs> um, multiverses. Dude. I just, I'm talking shit now, but I, I can't believe that multiverses got away with the biggest scam in gaming history I've ever seen in my life. I, <laughs> that, that I, is... Dude, that game, I don't even, I don't even like thinking about, that game kind of pisses me off, actually, if I think about it too much, <laughs> because, and I won't lie, they sponsored me a couple times, too. <laughs> and, me, too. And, and I liked that game. I, I just want to put too. on the record, but the fact, because... They sponsored me, but I bought that game with my own money, right? So I spent the, what was it? I got, I bought the full pack, Dotto, the $100 pack or whatever it was. And the fact that they took that away from me and didn't refund my money, I was like, <laughs> so I just can't play for 18 months now or however long it was. I was like, huh? And then they try to gaslight. Nah, you're so based on this because everything you just said, I agree with. And th that's why I honestly feel so totally safe saying this because Multiverses fans don't even get mad at me because I liked the game. I, I like it, honestly. I thought it was fun. I liked the characters they added. I was begging them to add Ben 10 on Twitter. And if they added Ben 10, I might even go back and check it out. But thinking about the scamas that this game pulled and also that the internet, I'm not going to lie, part of my hatred for this is how dumb motherfuckers on the internet talk about it. Like, oh yeah, the beta ended, so... It's coming back soon. What do you mean the fucking beta ended, bro? I gave the game $200. I bought it. It was not a fucking beta. Why do you believe that? The game just died, and then they removed it from the market, and then they put it back out later with some changes and a fresh wave of hype as an official release. What the fuck do you mean beta ended? That shit pisses me off. I can't look at multiverses without thinking about how stupid people are. So it's completely... If that one won the award... Forget being sad. I would genuinely be... You would see me on YouTube the next day <laughs> ranting about it, bro. That would be my first ever, like, gaming rant video. Would, would you I, Would I, you be convinced that the Game Awards were paid off at that point? Like, yes. actually? Bro, you would see me in there ranting and raving about how the Game Awards were paid off. They must have been in the pocket of big HBO, bro. No shot. God. Dude, I, I sent this. Me off. So, so, Xavian is actually editing our podcast today. Toasty is actually over in... <gasps> Japan. Uh, Japan. And, and I sent this screenshot just to make Xavian's life easier to, to edit this podcast that you're watching slash listening to. And <laughs> he said, make a, make a multiverses, make a wish nomination. Wow. And I, I was like, <laughs> man, dude, it fucking blows. Uh, uh, well, I mean, the game is whatever again. Yeah. Um, it's just, I, this, this, I played this game in 2022, man. This was, <laughs> And I and by the way, I enjoyed it and I liked the way it felt way better then than and I haven't played it since they've I know they've done some other patch, obviously patches and stuff like that, but that game when I did try it, the one time I tried it when it re re like re released, I, it didn't feel right to me. I don't know how <laughs> to explain it. It also looks stupid slow now, which also pisses me off. So I think they made the game worse made people think that somehow it was a beta and that it was ending like that was planned and the game just it was didn't in, die. It was an early access. I think them taking <laughs> it, delisting it, and making it where you can't play it, it should have... Or they didn't delist it, but I, I don't know. I feel like we should have just gotten, like, our money back. That's really just the way Full I feel refunds. about it. Full refunds. Full refunds. They should have... By the way, and if you... Don't gaslight us. Just say the game didn't perform, but we do believe in the premise, so we're going to try to reimagine this. We're going to refund people's money. And come back out with a new. Don't gaslight me and say this was always the plan. The beta's over, and now we're gonna be. You no, you did not take my money nope. because you thought it was a beta. Nope. You did not take my money because you thought it was a beta. Horrible, horrible. Uh, so Tekken I, 8's the only one here. I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. I think another fun one to talk about, even though it's actually just really stupid, is is most anticipated games. So they've got. <laughs> They've got Death Stranding 2. I guess we should have read off all, all of the... Sorry for those of you that have been listening this time. We basically said all of them, but it's Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, Grand Blue Fantasy vs. Rising, Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection Arcade Classics, Multiverses, and Tekken 8 are the five nominations for Best mm -hmm. Fighting Game of 2024. Uh, let us Sometimes know... Sometimes I forget that this could be an audio experience. Yes. Let us know what, what you think should win. Um, I do... I imagine a decent amount of you will say Sparking Zero I, and... Listen, I think the the only again I don't know anything about versus. I know Dotto said that should be the only two here. Um, it won't surprise me if Sparking Zero wins because I do think like this is such a beloved series coming back and it's being in this category. So it definitely could like snub Tekken Eight if it's win. 
I just personally think Tekken 8 should be the game that should win. And I don't that, even, I don't even have that many hours in Tekken 8. I just think Tekken 8 is like That's why that I game. get so passionate about it. That's why I get so passionate about it. Because other years, like, I hate when Best Fighting Game Award comes out. And then fucking Super Smash Brother wins it, man. Like, it's that, I feel like that's the opposite of what the Game Award should be about. Because, yes, I get it. Smash is hype and it's cool. But... 2D fight. I I guess it's more so just like 2D fighting games or even like 3D fighting games like Tekken. Like, it's just no love for those categories. I, I felt the same way actually because there's another category on here that was like best racing slash sport, and I was like, why are we combine? I get I get it because it's probably not enough games in the category. Yeah, but it's just like why is my why is my racing simulator getting beaten out by fucking FIFA 25? <laughs> like that's how I feel with like the the fighting games. I guess it's like okay. I guess I guess Street Fighter Six loses to um something else or, or you know like that. But yeah, no, I get whatever. it. Whatever. It, it it's not really a year where I think that would really matter to me too much because I, I I do like Sparking Zero and I would like for them to I don't know maybe it goes on sale because it wins an award or some shit. I don't, hey, if it gets more DLC, then I'm okay with it winning honestly. Um, but I would feel bad for Tekken Eight, I guess. Would you, real quick, just a side question, would you rather that game become the, like, sparking equivalent of Xenoverse 2 and get continual DLC drops, or would you prefer them to be done after the Dima DLC and we get sparking 1 or 2, whatever they call it, in 2026? I think it's just DLC. I don't think there's anything the game really needs to add on. Because hmm? uh, they could just do single-player expansions, too, if they want. Like, they could just add on shit, like... I like I think Xenoverse did that a lot. I think with it being such a party game, for me, I hope that we get an additional one and that that it adds. And I think I've said this before to you, and definitely I think on this podcast. But uh, I hope we get like another game in like 2026 um, that does some like additional changes and allows for essentially like multiple people, like two v twos, three v three, stuff like that. Yeah, that would be if and if they're adding that, and, then and that would be play. nice. Because appar- apparently, Ooh, yeah. apparently, word is, I don't know if it's someone that did like data mines, back end stuff, whatever. But the game appears to not even really be built well to even support it. So that's why a lot of people are saying it probably will never come. So knowing that knowledge, I'm like, okay, then I hope that this is like a good foundation, and we can just get like another game in like two years that fixes those things and has like I just think games can't be releasing in 2024 without crossplay at this point. Like if, if multiplayer is going to be a huge agree. component. It's, the battle's lost. Um, that battle is over. It, every multiplayer game needs crossplay. Yeah, to to some extent. All right, so I thought another fun one, even though it's a very obvious answer, and I think we'll both say the same thing here, but it's most anticipated <laughs> yeah. game. First uh, off, real quick. Go ahead. Um, before we read this game category, I just want a quick pulse take on this. Um, what do you think about this category? Do you like this being a category? Uh, I think, I think in most other years, sure. And this year, it's really just, it's really just a glaze fest of, of one game. No game yeah, has a chance. I was, was going to say, this is just a fun, like, what is this, dude? This is just state sponsored jerk off time. Like, that's it. Like, but uh, do you want me to read the games or you want to sure, read the games? You go for it. You go here? for it. You go for it. Our options are Death Stranding 2, uh, which uh, first time I'm seeing that has a subtitle on the beach. That's fucking hilarious. Uh, Ghost of Yote. Uh, Grand Theft Auto 6, Metroid Prime 4 Beyond, or Monster Hunter Wilds. Wait, which one was the obvious one to you, Nano? Uh, I was thinking Ghost of Yote, man. Me too. I'm a big fan. I will, I can I just, just say, gonna... as someone who Go has ahead. not played Death Stranding 1, other than like the initial intro, I actually really want to play that game. Like I saw Balvin playing it today, and I'm like, damn, I really got to get to that game at some point. So I actually think this is a very strong list of, of games. Like This is a very strong list. Like, Two of these games on here are games people have been wanting for decade plus, right? Metroid Prime and Grand Theft Auto 6 is crazy. They're finally here. But like GTA 6 is just such a behemoth that like there's no point in this fucking category, dude. There's just no point. Uh, yeah, no. This is this is unless just you're stupid. about to make an argument for unless you're a, a, a Metroid Prime head and you're about to make an argument that it could. Yeah, win. Um, unless every Nintendo fan rises up in one in one in one union and says Metroid Prime 4 um then maybe they'd be able to get 120th of the vote Grand Theft Auto 6 does uh but yeah not this I don't even I don't even know how I feel about this being a category this is so stupid 
I mean, like, yeah, it's, it's the GTA 6 category, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, we're giving an award to GTA 6 before it comes out so Rockstar can get a little trailer. Cool. Yeah, and another but, like, and another award next year when it wins Game of the Year if it even comes out. By yeah, the way. Like, what, what, like, how many years are we going to have to fucking hear about this? But whatever, man. Uh, I... Wait, well, let's move on, bro. Yeah, this shit's shit gonna piss me off. Let's get to the meat. Let's get to the meat. Let's just get to the meat. All right. Ooh, our debates. Ooh, your podcast host better start fighting. They better start fighting now. By the way, we Go are ahead. gonna we're gonna talk some Dragon Ball Dima, but I won't lie, we don't actually have to probably commit too much of this podcast <laughs> to that episode. <laughs> Ooh. Now, now you now you get the angry before we jump in. Huh? Okay, go ahead. What but thoughts on game of the year? Game of the year. We've got Astrobot, Blotro, Black Myth, Wukong, Elden Ring, Shadow of the Earth Tree, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and Metaphor Refantasio. Which Dotto? Yeah. Do my eyes mislead me? But have, have I you been spying on me? Have I seen you on Metaphor? Ah oh, shit. All right, let me go ahead and say I've never played any Persona game, or I'm, and I'm not even big into JRPGs. All I know right? this is why but, I was shocked. I was like, "That right, shit's probably right? is he hacked?" I meant to text look, you, be like, "You okay, brother?" Like, look, look, look. I'm gonna be honest. Something about the game awards, I do kind of appreciate them, just because it makes me want to be more cultured, right? Like, I literally am playing Metaphor Refantasia because one, I was sponsored to do so. And I was excited by the premise of an Atlas game not taking place in a high school just because, I don't know, I, I'm really, I don't like dating sim aspects in games because I don't really care, but, but this game doesn't really have dating sim aspects. And it's also fantasy based instead of like more anime inspired. Um, not that it's not very anime, but I was like, okay, maybe this is going to be cool. I'm going to give it a chance. I'm eight hours in right now. Eight. And it's kept you for eight. Yes. Yes, bro. And I'm barely just getting started. I will say, I'm curious to see how it goes. I'm going to try to keep pushing through. But one thing I'm really bad with JRPGs, and maybe people that play them will get it. Uh, the stories are told in arcs. And I feel like I, I played through and got to one big emotional climax of the story. Like, I guess the way I'll say it, no spoilers, obviously, is there's the main bad guy, right? And then he has henchmen. So I, I've beaten a henchman. And I feel very, like, emotionally resolved in the conclusion of that mini arc. So now that I stopped playing, I'm a little worried that maybe the emotion won't be there to get in and see what happens next. I don't think it'll happen. But so far, yeah, I'm playing it just to see if I think it should be game of the year. So far, it's pretty good. Um, the UI is crazy. Um, story's okay. Voice acting's pretty good. I'm just trying to be a more cultured man now. Got trying it. to be more cultured. So, so which of these games have you played? I've played... I've played Bellatro, Elden Ring, Shadow of the Erd Tree, and now Metaphor. And before this is decided, I'm making this promise, Nano. I will be checking out Astrobot for reasons I won't for reasons I won't say yet in the podcast. Bro sponsored what, what Astrobot you? video. I, I am not. I guess I'll just say my reason is I I want to be on team winner, and I think my heart is telling me that Astrobot should win this. So I really want to play Astrobot before it wins so that when it wins, I can be like, well-deserved. So, I don't want to just say fake well-deserved because I think it should win. So we, so the primary, the primary conversation around game of the year, and I'll also say, <laughs> dude, I'm, I'm going to get a, a particular fan base mad at me, but so many, and, and it, it actually just won, by the way, it just won a game of the year nomination. Um, and, and I've not played Black Myth Wukong. I've not played it, but I watched several of my friends play it. A fairly decent amount I, and that's always a controversial topic too if you've just watched it versus actually having the sticks in your hand and i just don't think that game to me like if it were going to go to a more souls like game which i know black myth isn't totally souls like it's more action and and it's like a mixture of like dmc with some you know layers of the just the souls like that is like taking over so many games but i think if you're going to give it to a game like that then even though this goes against what i tweeted and what i said i think urtree gets the win I think I think just that would just be given to Urtree. So I think you take away those two all together. And I think I think it unironically to me, it comes down to Astrobot, Bellatro, and Rebirth. It are like the three picks I actually think that could win. And and I I really like Astrobot. There's something about Astrobot that get like first off, like in terms of just a gameplay um element, like I'm ready for you to I 
I, I hope that you play it soon. Maybe we can talk about it on the podcast because that game is so like it's so tight. Like I don't know how to explain the controls on that game, but they're just they're fantastic. It it really does, and this is like the thing that people kind of sort of harp on this game for is that it really just just feels like like Mario Galaxy or <clears throat> or Mario Odyssey, but on a PlayStation, and obviously like prettier because it's actually on a PlayStation instead of uh, like Android device, basically. So. Yeah, I mean, that's why I'm excited to play it. I think it's just, like, platforming games don't come out very often, especially, like, super polished up, like, good-looking platforming games that aren't, like, I'm not going to lie, I think the closest thing to this would be, like, what, um, Ratchet and Clank on the PS5, like, when it launched. But yeah. to me, to me, those games kind of got a little more corny because it feels like they were, like, again, not that they didn't do good. I, I haven't played them, so I wouldn't know. But it felt more like they were justifying making a platformer in the current year. Like they're like, we added story and, and cutscenes and character drama and and you know, it's just like, eh. I kind of want you to be more confident in what you are. I feel like Astrobot is very confident it was it, it what it is. Yes, it it is. And the gameplay loop is so much fun, Dotto. Like Yeah. I could see my in again, I haven't played I want to play it before the awards. And I might even check out Black Myth Wukong. I want to get into a I'm little bit to. more about I'm that. I'm going to. I think I'm going to do I want to get into it a little bit more just because I know, I, I don't know how many people watching. I, this is just something I encounter a lot on the internet. But I know Black Myth Wukong has become a little bit like almost political yes, uh, on yeah. the internet. I don't know why, um, but yeah. And people get mad about it. But I just, I never thought I was going to check it out for a couple of reasons. And I want to state them so people know this. It's just, one, I'm not super into chinese like um mythology or like whatever wukong is i've never been super into wukong i think he's cool and i like goku so i i got nothing but respect for the guy obviously. yes yeah. it'd be a hard, a hard press to shit on the guy that inspired goku um and also i think it's it's a very good game graphically right but i'm not super into games that are pushing the realism aspect um i can admire when it's done well and think it's cool but it it I thought when I first saw the trailers, I was like, oh, that's very like Unreal 5, like tech demo-esque. So it's impressive that they made a game that can look like that consistently all the way throughout. Yeah, I mean, it's this, just, this is that game that everyone thought was fake for forever, right? We never thought this game was going to come out. Yes, that's why I have that impression because when I saw it, I was like, yeah, okay. But they did it, which I do think is impressive. But even still, it's like, it's just, I had the same feeling towards Black with Wukong. This is going to sound crazy insulting, but it's like if that, Sonic the Hedgehog and Unreal 5 engine game like came out like for like Mario and Unreal 5 and then somebody made that an official game I probably still wouldn't play it but I'd be like wow I can't believe you released that I thought that was gonna die as a YouTube clip um but I do want to check it out I feel like it's become big enough to check out um and I can appreciate that it is something different so that alone would be good Nano can we get into the real me actually very quickly Galatra is cool to be here it just for me personally I play it for like a few hours and maybe on the plane and it is good. And I think it's a it's really heartwarming on, I think it's a great game. Uh, I just don't think it's like, you know, it's like a nice, well-crafted, well-loved lemonade. You know, I don't think it's winning like international soda competition, 2024, um, but it's good. And I, I like the, like the guy's Twitter. Have you got, have you seen the guy's tweets? I've not. No, but I do know that it was made by what? a single guy. Yeah. Yeah, well, like one of uh, one of his tweets was just like, for the record, <laughs> I the the official project for Bellatro in my computer is still called Card Game. <laughs> like he had, he was basically saying like, I did not think this was gonna be a big deal. My project name was just Funny Goofy Card Game or something like oh. that. Oh, uh, which I which I think is very cool that he made something so crazy and it's really good. Like uh, my girlfriend and her dad love Bellatro. Um. So I spent many a late night hearing the sound effects. So I think that's a good inclusion. I, I probably wouldn't probably wouldn't win for me though. I just want to go back on something I said actually, as I as I, cause I, I oh. it came off it came oh. off I think the wrong way. I one thing I have also felt in this list is that usually when we when you look at a list, and I know this goes pretty much against what I just said, because I, I basically chose like half of them, but usually when you look at a list, it's pretty well evident who's gonna win. Like last year. Like it was Baldur's Gate. Like you just knew it was Baldur's Gate. You know what I mean? The year before that, I think it was pretty much a, a toss up between God of War Ragnarok and Elden Ring. And we can pretty well go back, I think quite a few years and it's always pretty well close. Like you have an idea of who's gonna win. I think this is one of the first years where 
I agree with what you said of Bellatro, but it also wouldn't surprise me that much if they said Bellatro won, just because it's it's just been such a huge phenomenon, right? And it is such a simple yet effective play loop. And it, like it wouldn't surprise me if whoever comes out and says and announces the game of the year says any of these six, I guess. Like I don't think I, I probably I shouldn't have <clears throat> sloughed off metaphor because I know a lot of people like that. But the only thing is is I think if you go that route, I think that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is a lot of people's favorite game of this year and it means so much to so many people which is what we're about to talk about that i think it could win just simply based off of that so that's that's why you know the list is kind of crazy because to me final fantasy is my like like it, final i'll say this with my chest final fantasy 7 is my get this shit off the list ass like not even for like any of the debate we're gonna get into I just have no connection to it. I haven't seen anybody say they really like it. What? Um, yeah, I haven't. I haven't seen. Just I've say seen you don't follow, nothing. Follow Maximilian, dude, at all, bro. What is? What? I, okay, okay. That's. I guess it's not true. I do see him really liking yeah, Max it. Max loves but this I, game, dude. I. I just know he's like super into it, uh, which is fine. I'm not saying it's bad, but to me, it's just like. I guess I just don't give a fuck about Final Fantasy VII. I, I, but the thing is, I like the kid. It's the only Final Fantasy I know other than fourteen. I just don't. I, I can't give a fuck. You know, I, I just can't. Um, man, and I, also, I wish you'd played fifteen or sixteen. By the way, I wish you would have played sixteen, dude. God, that I game. might. I mean, I'm kind of trying to be on my my good gamer kick, so maybe I'll try it out. I really think that um, game will hook you, dude. I genuinely do. It's it's, it's genuinely it's fucking Attack on Titan, dude. It's straight up, it's Attack on Titan, but mm. in Final Fantasy. I'm telling you, man. I think it will connect, man. I really do. Also, I I assume we're gonna get into this debate on if we think it let's, should be here or not. But also, yeah. we, we we've just ignored Elden Ring: Shadow of the Earth Tree was awesome, and I played it, and it was awesome. It was just more Elden Ring, but it was aw- I would say like. It was cool. Like right now, I would say it's cooler than Metaphor, uh, just because I thought the gameplay loop was more fun. But you know, there's a very real chance that that just wins, <laughs> which uh, which brings us to the debate. Yeah, you know, we, we disagree. We do. What's your point? Yeah. So, um, pretty much the debate here is, and I'm sure most of you guys are aware of this, is uh whether the DLC for things should be here on game of the year. Now I will say when I made my statement, I've have fairly closely watched the game awards and have react live reacted to over half of them. Um, and they've never had DLC for game of the year, but I did forget that they do sometimes have DLC in some of the subcategories. So this has been a thing in the past. It just has never made it into game of the year because apparently Witcher three DLC one best rpg over some other game that was fairly high profile and um you know some of the witcher 3 expansions are like held up as some of the best expansions of all time like shadow of the earth tree but my my issue even more specifically with shadow of the earth tree even more so than the fact that it's dlc on a game of the year list is that it's that game that is the dlc of has already won game of the year and that alone should get it off of this list why <laughs> should it be able to get two game of, like they can bandai namco if it wins can re-fucking release and go game of the year two times they can put it <laughs> they can put a stamp on there twice 2022 2024 game of the year awards what why dude that is pretty crazy and i i, I want you to know i can appreciate the argument from a thing but my my point by the way was uh, this is going to be more hate now that I've revealed my cards already, but I would rather because the entire internet was pretty much bustling with this opinion. Like, why the fuck is there a, a DLC in the Game of the Year awards? Um, they want it out. People are pissed, and I'm like, why is nobody getting this pissed about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, dude? Because to me, I know it's different. I know it's different than Final Fantasy VII. It's basically like a new story, but I just hate the idea that that all these 2024 experiences could lose to Final Fantasy 7 from 1997. What? It's just like these are all experiences that came out this year that people played this year that in 100 years uh, uh, imagine an an a, a fucking this uh, what are they called archaeologist <sighs> blows uh, blows dust off the cover of greatest games ever. They flipped to they flipped to 2024 Final Fantasy 7. What? What the fuck? And, and that's it, dude. That's all we have to say. I don't know. I just think remakes are just lame to have in here. 
it just it just is lame but okay but i think there's a big difference between like say resident evil 4 remake and final fantasy 7 rebirth like there's a huge difference because i've not finished re4 in either in either variant so this is not fair but i've played as far in the original as i have in the remake and it is the effectively at least from what i remember playing on the wii the same game whereas like it's just pretty right and it just functions better Whereas Final, Final, Fantasy, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is like a 100-hour experience expanding upon like a 30% section of Final Fantasy VII and adding things and all of that, right? When Final Fantasy VII can be beaten in like a 30-hour sit-down experience, not 30 sit-down, but 30-hour experience. So you're like, it's, it's just almost incomparable. Like it's not a one-to-one -one remake. That's why it's not called remake. It's called Rebirth. Yeah, I mean, I do. It's it's almost do, like Final Fantasy do, VII yeah. too. I I did. Do you know how the Final <laughs> Fantasies work? You do, um, right? I'm yeah. They're all different stories. Is that what you mean? Like they're yeah, just yeah. Different so stories? like so like Final yeah, they're Fantasy, not continuations. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so that's why like to like would it, if this was just called Final Fantasy VII colon two, would you feel the same about it, or would it be like oh no that that makes sense. I mean, I would think that's a dumb title, but I think I think in that case, I would be a little more okay with it. But because that's everyone's argument I, with with Shadow of the Archery, because everyone's argument is that it's a DLC that's on the level that they could have just literally called it Elden Ring Two. And so, yeah, if they just call, like I, that's why I don't get people being upset about this. By the way, because if it's if, if all you're arguing is the name needs to be different, then like it's, yeah, if it was just. The thing Shadow is, though, of the Erd Tree, the ten dollar game that you just buy. Now, my counterpoint to that, now that I, now that we're just swinging on both sides, is that you do need to be at a specific part of the game where I was to, to unlock Elden Ring, which I think is uh, a little fucked up. Like if you're going to put it on a list like this, uh, but it is an experience that came out in 2024. I just damn, I I just I really do see it. As just, I wish this award went to an experience that was uniquely of the year itself. Um, not based on anything that came before. Like, I feel like a big part of Final so, Fantasy VII Rebirth is just the characters from Final Fantasy VII doing new things. In a way that you're saying that, though, you're almost saying then that the list should just be Astrobot, Bellatro, Black Myth, Wukong, and Metaphor. Kind of, yes, honestly. Yes, yeah, see, Wait, But maybe, maybe, honestly, Nato, maybe this, I'm only having this mental conundrum because of what else they're up against. Because if you look at this, maybe if there was like a Mario game on here or like some Legend of Zelda bullshit, but right now it's literally DLC to popular game and expansion on popular character and popular game from 1997 versus new unique experience, new unique experience, new unique experience, new unique experience. It's just like these are not sequels or anything. So it just feels like, a little like lame that they're probably going to get beat up on by already beloved IPs. I, I think if there was, I think if there was, so I think there's a lot based on my interactions with people, there are a lot of people that think the only, it depends on who you talk to, but a lot of people really, really, really push off Astrobot, Bellatro and metaphor. And the only real three I ever really? see people talking about as contenders are Final Fantasy, Shadow of the Earth Tree, and Black Myth Wukong. And I think, first off, I just, I just don't... Apparently, this just won at the Joystick Awards, by the way, is why I mentioned that. Black Myth Wukong just won Game of the Year at the Joystick Awards. I don't know really what that means. I don't, I'm not familiar <laughs> with that. But, um, I mean, I've seen it, but I don't know, like, I don't... Anyway, I don't know how, how profile that is. But it did. And I just... Everything I've seen about this game does not, to me... And I need to get on the sticks and I need to try it out myself. But to me, it does not even look like a game of the year experience at all. But I know it was a big deal. But just it being a bit, if, if being a big deal means anything, then Black Ops 6 should be on here. Because Black Ops 6 is a big deal. But it ain't on here. Um, to be fair, uh, Black Ops 6 the first time I give a fucking Call of Duty in forever. So Yeah, I mean, yes. It impressed me. So um, I, I'm with you, though. Yeah, I think if anyone should win, it should. I honestly, I don't really have a horse in this race really i mean i like playstation stuff and i really like astro a lot but even though i've not played metaphor like um i've heard so many good things about that game like so many people really like that game like even persona heads are like i might actually like metaphor better than any of the persona games i've actually seen people say that um and so i don't know i would rather it go 
to one of those four and and it not be Elden Ring or Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I'm surprised Personally. you're saying people have been writing metaphor off. They have. Uh, because, which they could be. I, I don't know why I started with it because I literally was just like, I want to play through the games on the category that I haven't, except for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. There's not going to be enough time for that or my emotional standards just aren't going to be in it. So I'll just take people's word for it. You need to pick up a pro um, first anyway, you know? That is true. Apparently that, that game did get a nice little bump on that. Um, but no, I do, I guess it's kind of turning back into, um, the Black Myth Wukong thing is crazy to me because I know it's become very polarizing on the internet. Um, and it's funny that we both ended up being people that are kind of like, I, I, I don't really see it, but not like in a crazy way. I just, I just personally don't really see it like that. I don't know. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, no, it's to not, me, it just, I don't know. It's not even, it's not even really like, I'm not being a hater. I just. I don't know. I just didn't. I didn't know people would rally behind that game like they did. I guess. I. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like it definitely surprised me to see how many people really rallied behind that game. I don't know. Yeah. For honestly, I don't know if it was this was like uh, this for you or not. For me, it was literally like I saw the trailer. I was like, eh, that game's probably not gonna come out. Um, it comes out, and I was like, oh, I can't believe that game came out, and it looks pretty good. But I'm not really into realism. I won't play it. And then, like, I kind of just ignored it, didn't see it. And then eventually, I just saw it, like, be a polarizing topic. And people were like, you have no idea how fucking great this game was. I was like, holy shit, I didn't know people liked it. I, I was, I was I basically was not familiar with that game uh, at all. And, but people are super into it. People are super against it. Um, But, yeah. I guess that's pretty much all I got to say. Yeah. yeah. Uh, get Final Fantasy VII off here and Shadow of the Earth Tree wins. No, probably not, bro. I, actually, I, actually, I'm gonna make my okay, re right now. realistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go I'm ahead. Gonna, I, I want to do prediction now. I, I, I think, I think realistic. I think, I actually, I think I could see metaphor being like the the secret. What? Yeah, I'm so for That's real. Your prediction? But no, but no. My actual true oh. prediction. And this is just, I, I almost, and I almost hope it does because of the message that it sends is Astrobot. Cause this was like a fairly cheap game for them to make like they apparently like sony games are like bloating like getting to two to three hundred million dollars to produce these games and this game cost them under like 50 million or something to make and so it's just such a fun experience and it's like i don't know i almost just hope astrobot just because of how like playful it is and so many things these days come out that are just like so serious or like you said they just have like i don't know they just can't <laughs> embrace what astrobot is <laughs> I don't know. I just kind of hope Astrobot uh, wins. That's that's that would be my I'm, pick. If I had to pick one, I, it's Astrobot. I'm mad we had to drum it up and do all this shit. So my my just to end up being two whimsical guys, but but yes, my I think unironically, I do think the Shadow of the Earth Tree will just win. That's kind of how I feel. Like it probably will win yeah. because of the law of comedy, and I know the internet's gonna fucking get all fussied up. I know I'm gonna be reading about this. But I actually agree with you. Um I would want in, in the Dado Doyle Awards, I would give it to Astrobot. I mean, hopefully I'm going to play it and we'll, we'll see if my opinion changes if it's like ass. But I just think it would be a nice, it would be a nice message to send other than maybe voting for Bellatro. But I guess I, I just personally don't enjoy that enough to pick it. But Astrobot, it's whimsical. It's fun. It's a platformer. It's different. It's unique. You know, all things are good. Um, yeah. So you or, don't think, even though you're eight hours in, you don't think Metaphor could win it? No, I mean, I, I guess it could. I, I The thing is, I'm just kind of blind on all of these, uh, or, or at least how the internet perceives them at large. Let me see. Let me see. The, me uh, the Metacritic for that game is a 94, dude. That's kind of crazy. See, the thing is, for me, I don't like JRPGs, so there are elements in which the game does lose me. So I don't okay. I don't think it's perfect or anything. Um, I, I think know. it's fun. I think the characters are cool. Dude. What? I'm looking at, what, this, what, I'm looking at this year's at? Metacritic score. Do you want to know the, how the list goes here? Yeah, go ahead. Number one, Shadow of the Earth Tree. Okay. Number two, that. Astrobot. Okay. N number three, Metaphor. Guess what? They all have the exact same meta score of 94. Damn, Clash of the Titan. See, I don't know why Metaphor is. I don't, but again, I'm not, I guess, I, I think it, maybe it says more that I'm not into JRPGs and I am so far having a good time. You know, maybe that could be it. But I do think it's very. I'm just now I'm just going into the critique, bro. Like I do think metaphor is very on the nose with its commentary and like story. Oh, okay. um, race race plays a big like deal. Like the world is split up in factions and the ideal world is seen as one without racism. 
but I'm not joking. This is not spoilers. This happens very early on. There's a moment where somebody is dying and you go up to them and you're like, oh my God, can I help you? And they go, oh, you fucking. And then they say your race name. It's like, don't touch me. I'm like, okay, like, see, like this guy is so racist that he died instead of being helped by somebody that like, damn. And, and that's every character in the game, by the way, every single character in the game is just the biggest racist of all time. Um, so you've got pointy does, ears. You're probably from the demon <laughs> realm. The, oh no, yes, actually, I, I, you know, I didn't even make the dive a connection until now, but yes, this game, no hyperbole is more racist than Dragon Ball Daima. It is more on the nose than Dragon Ball Daima. It's whoa, whoa. I ain't never seen you in a shop like this. But all right, I guess I'll serve you. It's like, damn, dude. It's like every fucking person got to say something about it. Um, but I, do you want to connect back into Daima? We've kind of been going a while. Well, yeah, I was, I was going to get to Daima, but I just want to, I wanted to make sure I mentioned this for the, for the, you know, the listeners here. But number the four, the number four highest rated game of the year is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth of 92. And then and they just pick off Metacritic for this list or what? Uh, Bellatro, Bel yeah, Bellatro is number eight with a ninety, and I don't have to scroll too. F oh wait, no, Black Myth Wukong is kind of low. Wait, where the hell is Black Ooh. Myth Wukong? This is why it's become politicized, Nano, because the big corporate media wants to hide Black Myth Wukong from the events. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta see. I, I, oh, I it's an eighty-one. I think it's an eighty-one. I think. I think that's literally what they say. Oh, oh, okay. What that, what that side says. I, I think, I don't know. I, I, I actually don't know. All right, so uh, let us know below. Who do you think will be the game of the year? Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Sorry, I did not know that we would go on uh, a 50 minute sprint of hey, talking man. about that, but. Not much happened in this episode, all right? Let's let's be honest. Yeah, so. Right, we didn't, we didn't, we weren't struggling for time. Getting, getting to Dima, by the way, you can support the podcast if you go over to patreon.com slash key moments, or if you're here on YouTube, you can click join. You can watch our reactions with us as well as a plethora, because we've been doing this podcast for over a year. You get access to all that bonus content immediately, stuff like us playing games, stuff like us doing reactions, cool, fun little super cut that's still up of a particular reaction that you might want to check out. Just, just lots of cool stuff there. If you guys want to support us, absolutely appreciate it. And if you've listened this far, uh, support the podcast by leaving a rating on Apple or Spotify or leaving a like here on YouTube or, of course, subscribing. Or if you're just a listener, come over, subscribe us, help us get to the 100,000 goal. So uh, this episode was called Collar and, of course, is referring to the collar that is currently on Pansy's neck. And the thing that we find out in this episode, which was cool, is it's made out of the same material as the Z-Sword, I believe. Right, Dotto? No, I, I don't know if it was the Z sword or if it was like the Z, like the cube that they throw around. Oh, yes, or or that. I can't yes. remember. But either way, it, similar to that sort of just like hard material that we know about because of Shin or Supreme Kai. Um, it's and only the Kais can move around and manipulate and shit. Yes, it is specifically from um, the second realm, and it is put on all of the third realm demons when they're children, and it grows with them. And it's on there so that way they can track them, they can tase them, they can, you know, pretty much just control the entire third realm, demon realm. And if you don't have one on, you get in trouble. And Shin actually takes this off for her. And that is crucial that they do that because we get into a huge fight here with the, again, Gendamari is what they call them, the essentially the police for the demon king, Goma. And uh, in doing so, and they find out about Pansy and stuff like that, if she keeps that collar on, they'll just be able to track them down. Um, some cool other things to note here is Goku uses an instant transmission in this episode, which was neat to see. And uh, a one that was, I'll let Dotto uh, talk on anything he wants to mention here as well, but a big one here that I, I can only imagine, I'm surprised I've not seen on Twitter, which again goes back to the fact that I think just, just I may ain't, ain't hit the, that stride for people <clears throat> yet, but Pansy, uh, basically Goku eats these the two of these balls that are supposed to be the equivalent of two mils. So he essentially eats four mils. Like visually, he actually like grows from eating these. And Pansy's like, I just, I can't believe that you're an actual adult and you actually raise kids. And Goku's like, well, I, I didn't really, oh. I didn't have much to do with them is what he said. <laughs> and I'm like, both of us I, in I our reaction. Know you're going with this. Yeah, his, his that... words verbatim are, I wasn't really involved is what he says. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the funniest shit of all time. I don't know if, I don't know if Japan knows how funny that shit is. But that is a death blow. I actually took the time to tweet out in between now. Oh, and did you? Like when we watch. Yes, because because 
uh, Slow Plays put out a tweet saying, oh, Lord, and it was the screenshots of how did you raise a kid and Goku's response of I wasn't really involved. Um, I, I, again, I said it in the tweet, but I said, I just know a group of people fell to their knees after Goku said this. I don't, it's just become such a funny like argument to see online, even though like realistically to me, it doesn't matter at all. Like, it's just like a funny joke that people spam and that's it. But I, again, very, very funny to consider that somewhere out there is a guy that literally is arguing with people right now saying, oh, he, he didn't even mean it or I don't know. It's just, it's not that uh, uh. the Goku bad dad discussion, those fans specifically took a massive loss <sighs> today that they probably aren't going to recover from for a long time. They're going to need a new super manga chapter to come out today. You, do, you know, what's crazy is like, as someone who, until I got into like doing the YouTube side of things, I, I didn't like the only side of the internet. I really like dived into before doing this was the figure arts side. Right. And we didn't really ever have discussions like that. I didn't know that was even a thing that people really hyper fixated on and focused on like, I don't know. That was just never a thing that like I even thought people, you know, cared about that much. And then coming into the space and seeing like that is a topic that gets brought up a lot. Almost gets like fucking beat like a dead horse. Like that topic comes up almost too much. Um That's kind of, yeah, that's kind of where I thought it came from. I thought it was like like a joke that maybe people said was sometimes too, and then but people get serious. And then Team Forest and then Team Four Stars said it and then I thought it was getting spammed. And then because it was getting spammed and beaten like a dead horse that's when I think the the big Dragon Ball fans and the defenders were like, then they got more serious, and then the other side keeps doing the jokes, so they get more angry and more serious. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that's where it comes from. I don't really know because I've never really cared. But as a fan of rage baiting, I just see how this... I know this tool is going to get play in so much rage bait, bro. Yes. I, I just know it is. I, I, can, I can see the writing on the wall. Yes, 100%. Another thing we, is that Pansy's like, so wait, so Shin's probably not your actual like demon name. What's your real demon name? And we find out Shin's real name is Nahari. So that was another probably like pretty crucial moment. And I won't lie, we were, I, I don't remember, Donald, were you, were you kind of like in pain like me when we were watching the ships all get blown up, thinking that we were about to have another arc of waiting to progress the story? Because I did. Uh, yes, um, I thought it was over, and especially when they ran, they were avoiding bullets and they ran specifically <laughs> at their ship before breaking plane. for a U-turn. That was a great oh, moment for them. They're, Genius they're, stuff. They're having a, a, a like a five kill streak sent on them, dude. And they and they run towards the plane, bro. A full on like airstrike coming their way, and they go towards their damn plane, dude. Like, I genuinely really believed, really believed that they were gonna pause. And they were going to slow the show down yet again. Now, fortunately, that doesn't happen because they still wanted to get into Mari ships. Or, sorry, planes. And a pretty cool moment of getting to see, like, um, Pansy essentially has, like, a man in the chair or whatever that's able to, like, actually do, um, like, hacks for her. And so she can look up the warp sama code for this specific plane so they can still go between the, the demon realms. So they can actually get to the other demon realms. Um, so that was pretty cool. But they end up being actually two uh, a Tamagami. Like, we actually are going to finally get to see this fight next week's episode. Episode 8 of Daima is literally called Tamagami. And uh, it pretty much everything they show, showed from that episode was very jam-packed. Also, Vegeta, Bulma, and Piccolo are in the third demon realm. They're not with Goku and everyone yet, but they are actually finally here, too. Yep, and they got to catch up. Is there anything um, I missed? I will Otto? say, no, you covered pretty much everything and then some. I was just going to add on to the fact that uh, well, I seem to have lost the tweet here, but Geekdom himself tweeted out the pacing and Dimer really needs to pick up because there's still a ton left to get through. Oh, and then he said, uh, apparently he confirmed that there's going to be 20 episodes. He oh. said he'll say tomorrow, but then somebody replied to him saying that he had already said 20. So I guess we'll know for sure tomorrow. But I just thought it was crazy that, you know, if if a guy like Geekdom is saying the pacing's been slow. I'm surprised a couple of meatheads like us didn't already get worn down. I'm not going to lie because, because this was our breaking point, man. I, I think both of us were, both of us were on the knife's edge of just saying, let's get on with it already. And then we finally get to that, uh, the Gami barely in time, probably could have got here two episodes earlier yes. and I would not have complained. No. Um, 
And I but get I, a lot of the the comments about like it just being another adventure with Goku and happy to be back on like an adventure. And you can do the adventure storyline, but I also think there becomes a point to where you are doing your viewers a disservice and you're almost wasting their time to an extent. And I'm not necessarily saying Diamond has totally got to like that point. I, I'm with that, although I think we could have, I think we could have done some of these things a little faster and had some of these cool key character moments a little faster. Like there, you, you could you could absolutely watch some of these Diamond episodes and, and find like fat that you could trim out easily, like easily. Like we could probably, I, I, we could almost do an edit and probably make what we've seen now still be cohesive and be finished by episodes four easily without even probably too much trouble. But uh, that's not to say I've not enjoyed it, but yeah, I think if you got someone like Geekdom saying it, then I like, I, cause he's, I, I mean, I don't know a ton of, a ton about Geekdom with this stuff, but I feel like he's very much so, a, he's a lore guy, right? Like he cares about all that kind of stuff, like a lot. And so if he's getting pressed, Dotto, like, I don't know, mm. man. I, I mean, I agree. Um, but maybe it'll make up for it by just being a jam-packed yeah. middle to end, you know? Yep. No, I, I, I and also, again, I wish you'd watch Free Run, dude. There's something, there's something about, like, Free Run just did the whole, like, slow pace thing so, so well. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> like... Damn, dude, you need to watch Free Run. God, you need to watch Free Run. Anyway, um, Dada, we got book club, and we need to rate the episodes. Mm, it, unless mm. there's something else you want to add. Uh, there's nothing. My no, no, no. I, I, my book club question, I don't know if you have one. I guess you can add it on. I'll just uh, let you do yours. Do, because we did actually, one thing that we did not say is this Kagami seemed to indicate that this, at least this one, was a mandated 1v1. It has to be 1v1. You just 1v1 them. Or at least that's kind of what it seemed like in the episode. So my question was going to be, do we think Goku just beats him here? Like, is this it for the Tagami next, not, not next episode. I guess you could ask how many episodes it's going to be, but I just want to know, is this going to be like a Pokemon situation where we lose, we have to come back a little more serious next time, or are we just locking the fuck in and dumpstering this guy before Vegeta and gang picks up? We're rolling That's my on question through. is, Roll do we think through. we're beating Tagami first try or do we think some, some shit's going to happen? I mean, I personally, guys, I'll join in on Book Club right now via this video and audio podcast and say, I think that he's defeating him next episode. I don't think this is lasting past next episode. Wow, that is crazy. And I guess we kind of did need that because if it does end next episode, we're going to have to read people saying, I don't think it'll happen. And it'll be on the episode where we watched it happen. So didn't think that one through. <laughs> Nah, they can they can dive into it. All right, so um, let's go ahead and let's do book club first because there might be some stuff in here that might you know, and then we'll do we'll we'll finish up with the rating. So first up, Dotto, we've got yes. Lawrence over on the Patreon where you can be a key member and I ask Lawrence. questions just like this. So I really like how they revealed the Arn and Gorio connection right now, rather than dragging along that mystery for the next twenty episodes. I agree, by the way. Because I, I agree, but they dragged it too long anyway. I think, yeah, I, I, yeah, I agree. They, the whole mysterious Gorio is like, yeah. Um, as for the something that needs to happen, nothing against you guys, but I wonder if the same would be said if Super 2 did come back and we got six episodes of a more slice of life before getting to one of the newer arcs. I wonder if people are giving Daima less room because they write it off, at, off early on as a Goku turns to kids show. Um, I would say, yes, they do. But also, we know we're not getting a long... I think it hits different in a series like Super, where that shit was going to be every week for the rest of our lives. Whereas Daima is a limited time experience, so every week counts, I would say, fi honestly, an infinite times more. But we'll just go with a light five times more than your average Super episode. Yeah. So, yes, you're right. Yes, the Goku turning into a kid thing does affect it. Yes, it feels like a reduction. The assumption is it feels like a reduction in power going back, even though I think this series has done a great job of not feeling like that and adding in all of the ways it doesn't. Yeah. Um, but yes, you're completely right. But also there's some legitimate reasons. I think it hurts a little more. Um, but yes. I think the one thing I will say about this is I think that that would also be an issue too. I think that... Oh, yeah. In order for Dragon Ball to... You know, Dragon Ball's big right dragon ball's big dragon ball is almost i, I hate saying this because i think this is maybe how they feel i don't know but dragon Ball's almost too big to fail 
and I almost hate that feeling because like you got to always have that drive, right? Like it's kind of, it's like with the most things you got to have that drive. And I, I hate that you would say that. And I can believe that that's how it would be. You're probably right. But I would love if super came back and by episode six, again, I need to read the moral arc, but like some crazy shit has happened. Like it is fast paced. Like think, I hate to compare it to this, but it's just the most recent of, of liking the pacing. But like, it's like JJK, like JJK season two specifically where JJK season two, like every episode, something's happening and the story's moving and things like things are happening constantly because like, that's just kind of where the modern space is. And it's not even so much of just like needing people to have like longer attention spans or, or because people do have shorter attention spans, more has to happen. But it's just more about like keeping people engaged from week to week and wanting them to come back. And I'm afraid if you, I mean, people will still show up for the big fights, but I think it's just more about getting them to do a more modern adaptation. I don't know. Like, what do you think, Dotto? Right? Like, yeah, I mean, people, I mean, people just like shows where the story is moving forward and, and I mean, it's a, Honestly, this isn't even a new trait. I think this this kind of goes back a long way. Well, it but it's just but... like if if you're not showing your audience the most important part of your story at the time, why are you showing it to them? It's it's kind of like it's whatever. So yes, yeah, Super would probably do that, um, and it would it would suck. Like I re I actually <laughs> I mean remember when Super started and it redid both movies? I didn't watch that shit until it moved on to the Goku Black stuff. Uh, I would tune in every now and then, but I was not like hyped. I wasn't looking to see what other people said. You always go to go to like, black, oh, but yeah. it's U6 first, U7 first. Some people got right, us on right. that, by you're the right. way. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. You are right, you are right. Because you said the first lock-in lock moment for people on Super was future, but I, a lot of people said they thought it was probably Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken, and, and I agree. I think Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken was like, hold up, wait, what are they doing over there? Like, that yes, was probably no, that. that. That is 100% correct. And even though Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken is literally my favorite form, I'm not going to lie. And I've proven this with my actions now going on three to times. Uh, that whole shit is like super forget forgettable to me. Like I agree. that like frost shit and like I agree. Like the characters themselves are cool. Like that's technically where we meet hit, right? Yep. Like we meet hit, we meet Tobo, we meet Kava, and those are all cool, and I like those elements of super. But for some reason, that little thing and the Manaka gag and like all that shit is like I just block it the fuck out, dude. I, I literally can't remember it even if I try. I can't do it. I will forget about it next time too. But yes, I, I agree. That was definitely the first lock-in moment and the stuff with Hit. Um, so yes, that is when I tuned back in. Anything before that, I was out. So Lawrence also had for us, I definitely don't think our Dr. Arnsu is the main bad. She's definitely one of them, but I think she actually has some goal to maybe awaken something bigger and badder. Maybe wicked if it was a giant like a Rutagon or put some puppet on the throne. The money's still on Neva as the final villain. He uses the Dragon Balls, becomes younger, and we have a Demon King Piccolo fight again. That would not surprise oh, me. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. that, that Maybe they try to, like, redo it. Yeah. That wouldn't really... Um, yeah, I don't know. That wouldn't really surprise me that much because we know that Akira likes, like, Piccolo so much. So having... He would presume he likes Namekians a lot. So having a Namekian end up <laughs> being the sort of, like, true big, like, bad, in, bad guy ending of... Uh, or bad guy villain... Would not not be that surprising. Lee hit us with. I, I wouldn't hate that. Wouldn't hate that. Lee hit us with. It's actually been so long since Dragon Ball has felt like an adventure. I've been enjoying just feeling like I'm along for the ride with the characters, which is totally fair. Just maybe the the adventure is a little faster pace. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, I I like the adventure too. I definitely think this episode, like the formula is getting a little too formulaic for me. Um, like there. Yeah, you called this out in the gags. reaction, but. Yeah, eating gag, diamond lore moment, uh, moderate fight, um, set up nothing. Yeah, but it's, it's it's like all right. I mean, I want some new adventures. You know, like uh, the fight with Gloria was good. You know, yes. if, that, if every episode had like a a joke turn around into a that, you know, then then it would be more bearable, I guess. Christian hit us with I'm absolutely shocked. Dotto didn't mention Gloria's magic looking like uh, a Chidori. I'm not an Naruto fan, and I saw the similarity. LL Naruto fan card revoked. Also, <laughs> you know, okay, no, no funny business on this. Full, full talk. I, I think in our reaction today, somebody would have to watch it and this. So I don't think anybody will ever correct us. But if you watch me, maybe you'll be able to see my brain do it because I say that Pansy uses a Sheehan taser, and then Glorio uses the lightning bolt from like up close. I in my head, I was like, oh, he just used like the lightning blade. I don't remember if I said it out loud. But then I think I decided to say that he also had a taser. You did. But I did, in that moment, 
think about referencing Naruto, which you have no way to fact check. But believe me, episode, the second episode we see it, I was ready to make the reference. Uh, also, I don't think you guys finished the Sean Schimmel interview, did you? We never did get back to it. That's our bad. We're, we're bad oh. about that. <laughs> uh, That's crazy. You're keeping tabs on us like that, Christian. Damn. Yeah, wait, so you got a wire? All right. Blue's Clues is back this week. Ultimately, the perception of Diamond's pacing for some people comes down to them not having watched the Battle of Gods and Resurrection F recap episodes of Dragon Ball Super, which misinforms Based. their comparisons of DBS's pacing to Diamond's. And probably being custom to movies now doesn't help. A steady start is a good thing to me. Around 20 episodes, could be 19 or could be 24. We will have to wait and see. I suspect most of the blowback and perhaps lack of care for some on Daima at this point in its run is largely just people's redirected negative feelings on the fact that this isn't the moral arc, which I understand and feel their pain. Essentially, their frustration at the situation is making them judge specific choices, like a steadier start, more heavily than necessary, to me, of course. Also worth talking about with Dragon Ball Super, a good chunk of people, myself included, didn't really latch onto or had even started watching it until the, the virality of Blue Kaioken or the Goku Black reveal. So judging a shorter series on lack of big moments, six episodes in is six, ep six episodes in is kind of crazy to me. But if by episode 14 of Daima, we still aren't progressing, then we can talk. I would not go as far <laughs> as to say you're not a DB fan if you're not liking Daima, but if after six really pretty, pretty funny and interesting world building episodes, you still aren't feeling it, maybe you are an ascended meathead. And it's in no way a big deal because, of course, we are talking about a cartoon here. Well, with that being said, I'm having a blast, and it sure seems you guys are too. Yeah, I mean, we we are. And I think it's also, but the only thing, Blue's Clues, I think we kind of got you here a little bit, or that we've already kind of disagreed with here, um, is just saying that I think the, and, or Dotto said it actually, the stakes are higher because there's just lesser episodes. This was, you're talking about a 130 episode series to a 20 episode series. And so six episodes or seven episodes now of pure, raw world building. Um, leading to our first true like conflict here uh, in episode eight, when we know there's only going to be 12 episodes after that one is kind of, kind of crazy. So, yeah, I think, I mean, I don't disagree with anything you said in your comment, actually. I do think, uh, well, I actually, the only thing I disagree with is if, if we got to episode 14 oh. and that was only where it was starting, I, I would have meant to, uh, honestly, the podcast would have been done. If we were on episode 14, <laughs> I would have just been like, hey, listen, Nano, it was a bust. Like, shit, shit went a little sideways. But, um, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe like... go back to Z rewatch and let this finish and we'll just, we'll, <laughs> we'll, uh, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll check in when it would have been fused. <laughs> I, but, but I do think right now, like, I, like me and Nano were literally talking before we recorded. This was our meathead cutoff moment where like we were like, okay, something has to fucking give this episode. And thankfully, we just get to the Tagami at the very end. I would have liked it maybe an episode or two sooner. Um, but I feel like my other thing is like I, I'm not basing it off super per se. I think I was just under the assumption, which you can prove in the podcast, that the journey of Daima would be more about Shin, Tansy, Glorio, and Goku. I thought that was what our journey was going to be about. So I based my expectations off of us completing most of that journey before Vegeta joined in and the gang. But now it's very clear that they're going to be here for a majority of the important events, right? Like they're going to be here for two out of three Tagamis and the final boss fight. I thought it was going to be a final boss fight thing. Um, so that's what I think was setting the timeline in my head. I No, and, and yeah, I kind of see where you're coming from for sure. I I still think that mm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I totally agree. Well, it's mostly the the like if they're not liking it after these seven episodes, like, you know, they're just like a, a, a more of a meathead. I could I could see people though that still enjoy like the other side of like Dragon Ball and still maybe not totally vibing with this to some extent. I don't know. Cause it, it is I don't know. The kid thing, I think, is just a big, a big, 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 big part for a lot of people <clears> specifically. I think it's really just the kid thing. But I do too. I think in any media, when you move backwards instead of forwards, there's going to be some people that just don't like that. Even though, again, that's me, and I feel like Diamond does a lot to justify it. Um, you know, it's just it, for some people, it's just not cool. Then not a, another thing. By the way, shout out Blues because we always appreciate your comments. Uh, Dragon Fang Dotto hits us with something that I felt like we had to bring out before we ended today's podcast. 
Okay. We haven't talked. We talked about this off camera. We haven't talked about this in the pod. I haven't. Dragon Fang says I haven't watched a single episode of Dragon Ball anything, but I love hearing you go through the episodes and just talking to each other. You two are great. There was an over. Well, now not necessarily just watch a single episode of Dragon Ball, but there was an overwhelming amount of comments that you guys are actually not watching Daima which really shocked me Dotto and I both agreed like we said like what I think you said like what at least 70% were probably watching it and based on the comments yes, like thought, less than half I, I thought all of you guys were watching the show dude what the fuck are you doing here for real uh but yeah, we talked about this in the Patreon reaction uh definitely missed the mark on that I figured we were, like again when we talk about like oh people aren't watching that I meant like fans of Dragon Ball at large like like the people that just watched it as a kid and maybe aren't watching now or people that watch super, but didn't even know Dima came on. Not you guys. Yeah. Let's tune into a podcast every week yeah. about Dragon Ball Dima. What the fuck you mean? You guys aren't watching it. What are you talking about? Damn. I, I just crazy, bro. Blew I, I actually didn't expect it. I didn't expect it. Blew um, so that's my mind. That also, uh, then I started looking at the show like hella, like I started rethinking it. I was like, is it that slow? Like, is it, like, what do people not like about it? Um, but that was crazy. And then our final comment of book club for the week. Again, don't forget to leave a comment and join in on what Dotto asked you guys. And also, as you can tell, I'm just kind of like picking some stuff too. I mean, I, I just appreciate hearing from you guys. I kind of like that we added this little section here. Uh, Frosty French Toast says, I just don't care about Dima. It looks, looks beautifully done and there's a lot to care about in the world building, but I don't care. The idea of the mini sized characters absolutely grates on me, and Goku obviously being stronger than everyone else isn't at all fun to watch for me. I'm really just waiting for Super to return in some manner, either a manga return or even a new anime for it. I want to see Goten and Trunks finally doing stuff that hits home with Dado. Uh, Gohan being relevant again, Broly learning his new powers, Pan and Piccolo's dynamic. I don't care about whatever time is doing. The common response I see is, oh, you just like big key blasts oh, nice. and flashy colors. But I tell you what, if Goku got a cool new form in Daima, everyone would be plugged the fuck in. <laughs> <laughs> honestly kind of based i mean you are just based i can't argue with you because i see wh i see who you are and you are me so <laughs> yeah um, the, he, although he, he really I'll, got I'll you the in trunks comment by the way that was like... i mean it's true that i mean the funniest thing of diamond will always be that that Goten and trunks literally just grew up and they got <laughs> they got blasted back into being babies that is just objectively fucking hilarious um but no you're based like that was that was just based um, even though, again, I'll keep saying this, Nano, because I am a hater of turning, of going back and making them a kid. I still think that is the best thing Daima has done is they've given Goku every excuse in the book. And I know he listed it as a bad thing and I can see what he means, but I think Goku being the strongest is earned and way stronger than these guys is earned. And I like that even though the show's like, yes, he's a kid, but he beats everybody's ass here and the weather's different and he's not used to his body and he can't, he doesn't know what he's able to do. And the weather here is heavy because the volcanoes. It's like, oh, damn, bro. Like, they're they are giving him every reason in the world to keep these fights close and then still letting him show off. No, I, yeah. Uh -huh. I, as much as I've sat here and probably, I don't know, honestly contradict what I'm about to say. I, I've actually enjoyed all of this. This was really, like what Dotto said, we were talking about it before we immediately went into the episode. This was the first week where I was like, okay, I kind of, I kind of would like for something to like happen or at least be to that point of happening. But I honestly, like, I, in this world, and we're, not when you and I are dissecting it and talking about it for an hour or whatever, like, when you're just watching the show, like, I'm so sold on everything they've set up here. Like, I'm not thinking about, well, you know, if this were Dragon Ball Super, he could go Ultra Instinct. Like, I'm just, I'm like, sure, hell yeah, dude, this makes sense to me. Hell yeah, bro, the air's heavy. Sure, yeah, Goku's in, in a smaller body. Yeah, this would be a lot to have to readjust to. Your punches, like, don't, you know, hit the same. So... Yeah, I'm I'm still really enjoying it. One thing, by the way, since technically he's here, we have to revisit our, our Vegeta episode bet. Or do, or do we not revisit it because he's not technically with Goku yet? But he's technically in the demon um, realm. So do we vi revisit it? Do we close it out? What do we do here? I would actually leave it open until they meet up. Okay. Like, as soon as they address one another, okay. that's when I would close it. Okay. Although, I'll leave it. I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be upset if anybody closed it now. Because I, I, I do see their point. Nope, we're gonna leave it open for now. We're gonna we're gonna leave the Vegeta episode. Yeah, I, I, I want to see be, because I want to see how it fluctuates, right? Like I thought it was like I thought it was no way gonna happen. Then I thought it was fucking Jover. Like immediately, I thought it was over. Um, but then Daima really slowed down the pace, mm -hmm. 
And now we're on seven. Are, so we just did seven going on eight now, yeah. right? And they're still not technically and together you, yet. And you said 13. So you might actually get pretty fucking close. And that's pretty impressive considering how over I thought it was as soon as Bulma started <laughs> building that machine. I, I thought it was done. I mean, yeah, she started building but, it, what, in episode two when they, you're right? Yeah, they found like, it. Like right, right away. Episode two, she's like, we're going to. Um, and then it was cooked. But yeah, you might end up being spot on. Or maybe, I think it'll probably be like, ah, we could do an episode 11. I think Goku's going to solo this one. So it, it might take three episodes to do it, knowing Daima pacing. So three episodes, it falls, they meet up with Vegeta. That would be eight, nine, ten, and then boom, you're only three episodes off. Okay. Well, I guess we'll see. We'll leave it open, which then means the final thing to do of the day, Dotto. We have to rate the episode. I th- Who's saying it? Who's holding up the fingers? Uh, I'll say it. You can hold up. I am bet. Um, I know exactly what I'm giving this one. I'm going to, you know what? Don't Fuck co- it, dude. Don't copy me. Don't copy me. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. I held it up already. Shit, man. I'm afraid you're going to say the same thing, but. Nah. Giving it a seven. Ooh, we didn't give it the same thing. I went, I went a little under the, um, I went with a six. Okay. Dang, that's, wait, so that is your lowest rated ep- episode to date. Yeah, and I think I do feel that way. I think I am hating a little bit just for the humor of it, but realistically, like, nothing really happened this episode. Even the Dima lore moment was kind of boring. It was just Shin's real name. And that was kind of, I mean, what literally happened? Like, our ship got broken up, but we got, we got nothing the, the, meaningful. The, 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 the Tamagami, that's pretty much it. I mean, yeah, that's literally it, but, like, the episode could have started there, you know? Like, it could have been like, all right, we made it. Because the ship comes in, they get attacked, they lose their ship. They get a ship. Hansi loses collar. Vegeta shows up somewhere else where Goku tells them to meet up, which we already knew that information. He said that before. So literally, it, like, we could have just started on the Tamagami, I think, and been all the same. But I, I mean, I, I wasn't bad. It was, I agree it was with all pretty. your points for the most part. Yes, I agree with all your points. I, I, th- I think that right now my lowest rating is a six on episode two. Your lowest rating is a six on episode seven. Um, and I actually have not given out a seven yet to this series. I've been, it's been a lot of eights and a lot, and a lot of eights actually. It's very eight heavy. So, uh, this felt, I don't know. This felt like a little step behind last week's. So we'll see what happens next week. Next week's feeling like a, a potential 10 right now. So. Yes. I also, I, I mean, prediction, I think this will be the lowest score for me in, um, the entire series. Yes. I, I think so. You think, you think after eight, we're just going to start like steamrolling. You think? Um, yeah, I, I, mean, th- I think once we fight the first Tamagami, I mean, we're, we're, it's only up from there. You, you brought up Geek Come Sweet and he said that like, there's so much that still needs to happen. Like what's up with this pacing? So, I mean, you might be right. Like, it, or we, we might be right this whole time. We were saying like, is it just going to be just, just boom, 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 boom in the second half. Anyway, there you go, guys. That's, uh, that's it. That's, this is like, Donna, this is like episode 60 something of this podcast, by the way. Can you believe we've done I, I 60 mean, of these? And if you include uh, the yes. bonus podcasts, it's insane. It's 62, I think. This is episode 62 of Key Moments. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you're on YouTube. Check out the Patreon. You might find something you like over there. And you can support over there for those things. But, Dotto, I hear the beat. A little bit of a long one today. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Ooh. Dropping a, dropping a little bit of a long pop, but that's that's the beat. Dotto, I think we got we to gotta go, Dotto. I need to get out of here. It's getting too loud. Whoa.